Hey guys, John Brown and I talking about the power of people in your business and how golf management companies are selected by clubs. Um, there are two main ways that that happens. One would be a club that sort of realizes they need some expertise in the room, need some help. And the other is when a club is seriously underperforming, really struggling, there are companies out there that'll come in and, and float really, really seemingly attractive offers across the table, um, bringing some venture capital to the table and promising to spend money on the club over an extended period of time. But as it turns out, those deals are too good to be true. And um, that's a real tough position for clubs to be in two or three years down the road when this money comes due. Hope it's a lot of value to you. This is the Golf Essentials Podcast with Casey Borg. Yeah, I just um, I played golf today at a, a local club that I, I go to quite a bit, and it's a really nice club. It's a good, good solid private facility, and um, it, over, over the last seven or eight months, it seems, they've been just playing musical chairs with staff there and, you know, bringing in guys from outside into leadership positions and basically, you know, creating this, what looks to me and what everybody over there feels like is the, just glass ceilings for everybody and um, expecting more with less from everybody. And it just seems like it's, it's supporting that, that cliche, that, that sort of stereotype that golf management companies have of just getting in and just cut, 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 you know? And I thought you might have something to, something to say on that, you know? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So, um, you know, it's an interesting thing, having been in this industry as many years as I have, to watch some of the craziness that goes on. And, um, you know, golf management companies generally come in to facilities in one of two ways. Um, one would be the conventional way where the facility has, you know, realized that they need some professional help and uh, they want some expertise. And they, you know, they, they, they basically interview a number of companies and hire the one they like the best to come in and help them with them from a management perspective. So, mm-hmm. We'll, we'll keep that in mind, and I'll talk about that more in a few minutes. But the other way they come in is they come in through, you know, what the industry, uh, you know, two years ago thought was, uh, you know, changing the industry in a very creative way to do things. Uh, there's management companies out there that are loaded up with some venture capital that come in and make deals with these private clubs that are struggling. Uh, They don't put all that money up front. What they do is they guarantee these clubs that they'll spend X, Y, or Z over the next two or three years in capital improvements. And they hold the dues line, the, the, you know, level for these members. And then maybe they even lower it a little bit. Mm -hmm. They make it very attractive for them. The issue for me on those deals has always been that, one, I've looked at dozens of those deals, and I cannot make sense of any of the business that's going on there. It just doesn't make sense because, lo and behold, you know, when the day is over, you're still paying too much for that deal, uh, literally. So, what happens from an ops perspective in you, those you, deals? You mean from the management company's perspective or yeah, from the yeah, club's perspective? Yeah, they, they've, they've agreed to pay too much, the I management company, yeah. to buy the facility. Okay, So they've made a deal to get in there, to have a hold of this facility and to control it. At least a controlling that, share. Yeah. yeah, that just doesn't make any ROI financial sense at all so what ends up happening is you know they'll cruise along for a year or so and then then they get close to the time when they got to start anting up big money to you know maybe replace a roof or change the greens or whatever it is Mm -hmm. where there's big money that's going to come up here that's part of the sale that they've guaranteed they're going to spend 
And from an ops perspective, they start uh, shuffling the chairs, uh, cut, 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 and generally the member experience goes down steadily during that time. Um, the staff, uh, you know, somebody might have been a director of golf at a facility, and a year and a half later, he's, you know, he doesn't know what his role is because mm-hmm. he's he's doing so many things and 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 making less money and and quite frankly, he's probably miserable as an individual. Um, those are not good situations if you want to create really good customer service for your members. So I've seen so many of those, and they continue to happen. Uh, we were managing a club in my old uh, with my old company uh, in a major city in the Northeast, and you know, a company came in and did a similar thing there. And, you know, quite frankly, uh, the deal that they made, me knowing the inside scoop on this particular club and, 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 and what might be in the attic or in the basement or whatever, right. and, and the real issues related to it, uh, just a crazy deal, just a crazy deal. But, they're in there and, you know, they've promised to do these things down the road in year two, three, four, five, whatever it is. Um, they got to ante up because, you know, they got in and grabbed a hold of this golf course and, and, and bought it basically for a song. They bought it for the members believing that their dues line was going to be stable and that this company was going to fix this place and, and transcend this facility that was, had fallen in disrepair. Right. Um, yeah, that's 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 one of the deals that's out there. That, you know, the other exactly with the, what I'm seeing at, at this club yeah. in the neighborhood, it's, it's yeah, crazy. yeah, it's and it's sad. It's sad because there's good people at these clubs. Um, you know, you and I have had this discussion on numerous occasions that our mode of operation with personnel. Uh, is nothing like that. We believe that our people are the most important part of the success of our business. They are us at the facility. They're you and me, Casey. Absolutely. And we've all we can hope for is that we've trained them well enough. We've created a wonderful position for them. They've dedicated their life to 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 you know to doing a good job for our company. And they understand that the growth opportunities are tremendous. And, and, and when those things are present, they'll do a wonderful job at that club. And the, and the member experience goes way up. It doesn't go down. Sure. And, you know, you and I have talked before, even on this podcast, that, you know, our most important thing is, you know, that, that the member expectation and actually what is delivered to them and what they communicate that delivery was are the most important things that are out there for us. Yeah. I mean, that's us. Yeah. You know, you when know, a member from, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say to, to your point about the, the employees being the top priority, what, what's interesting to me, and I think a lot of companies don't understand, is that the motivating factors for each individual staff member can, can be very different and it can also change over time, right? So some people are motivated by money, others by title, others by the work, work life balance and those sorts of things. Um, And that's always evolving in a human being's life. Um, So that really puts the importance on communication and face to face time and uh, reaching out to staff members and, and understanding what motivates them the most so that, you know, you, know, you can keep yeah. them engaged. And, uh, but the, the set and forget I, strategy doesn't work there either. You know? No, I, I completely agree with you, Casey. And, and, you know, it's, I'll even simplify it a little further. It's just like every other relationship on the planet. <laughs> yeah. If somebody knows that, uh, they, that you care and they care, um, that is a, that, that's a recipe for success yep. in any kind of relationship. 
And it's really, really important for you and I never to lose the perspective of how much we care about our people. Um, you know, golf's evolving into a lot of different things. And, you know, there's a, you know, there's a, the, 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 with the internet and all the different things that are going on, sometimes the, the human perspective kind of uh, gets pushed aside. I, I'm never going to let that happen in any company I'm involved in because, you know, people are still the answer to success. And, uh, uh, and, and, and quite frankly, these companies that are doing these kinds of deals that are out there that don't make any sense right off the get go. Um, I mean, you got to ask yourself, you know, here's a club that's worth $6 million. Why would this guy pay eight for it? Even though he's, you know, he's got a couple years to pay the eight, he's still paying 8 million for it. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's paying too much money based on what it's worth in the marketplace today. Uh, uh, hoping for some kind of value down the road. Well, something's got to give in that scenario. And of course, something will give. And, and, and generally it's uh, those relationships that are personal will go away and, uh, and it becomes a cut, cut, cut thing uh, just to try and make it se- make sense well after the fact. Yeah. You know, Payroll that's, the that's first that, thing. Right. That's the second kind of thing that we talked about. The first thing is just a traditional management contract and those things are out there. Um, and, 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 and quite frankly, you know, my companies have been involved with some of those, you and I are involved with some of those kind of, uh, moving on it right now in our new business. It's, it's a very important thing to understand that the personal side of this still applies there the care and concern for your employees uh, still applies there. That's how we get them to be, you know, um, to, to achieve uh, things that they never probably thought were possible because, you know, they're empowered to be just great employees and they're empowered to roll out the red carpet and produce a product for the club members there to exceed the club members expectation. And, and, you know, we don't micromanage them. We don't do any of that kind of stuff. We make sure that they've got the tools to be successful on their own. And we coach them and coach them and coach them and coach them because that's what it is. You know, we're not telling them we're coaching them just, you know, back from my, your hockey days and in my football days, you know, we're coaching and uh, the best coaches always win. And it's the same thing in golf. The best coaches always win. And that's the way it's going to be. So my advice to people out there is, Hey, figure out which one of those two management company, uh, you know, activities is going on at your club. And if it's the, if it's the traditional management contract, figure out who the best coaches are. And I can, I can tell you, you know, in our company, KPI Golf, uh, we coach, 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 coach. Now, whether we're the best or we're not the best, we believe in it. And, 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 and quite frankly, we're going to go after it every day as if we're the best. In the second scenario, with the, uh, you, you know, with, with the guys that are out there buying these clubs at crazy prices uh, that don't make any sense on day one of the deal, Sooner or later, something's going to give there. And that's a harder situation for club members to be in because they've been sold a bill of goods, basically. To, to be clear, and, those, and, those kinds of deals are mostly sort of equity-type situations converting into non-equity situations, right? You know, mem- yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. These are, that's right. These are, these are club members that had equity in the club, and they're giving it up, giving it to – yeah. XYZ company who who has sold them on the fact that they'll spend millions of dollars on this facility and their dues will never go up. Right. You know, you know, there's a there's a can of worms there, Casey, and it stinks. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, at at some point, it's really, really important for all these club members that might be listening to this podcast to get a hold of a company that <clears throat> and get some advice. 
get yeah, some get advice. It doesn't cost you that much money to get some advice. And you know what? You and I will do a podcast on that, maybe tomorrow or something, but it telling people what it costs to get some advice. They've yeah. got to get some advice from companies that have done it, been there, seen it, and know it inside and out and can tell you honestly what's coming down because it's real, real important to, to really understand the whole ball of wax. Yeah. 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 That, that first step of just getting an expert opinion is, you know, minimal barrier to entry and, uh, and right. try to make some educated decisions about your club. That's right. I yeah. mean, you know, there are so many ways that you could go. I mean, we've done podcasts on the hybrid options. We've done, we've done a number of different things. Mm -hmm. um, there's so many ways, but if you're not an expert, you know, in this game and in this management of these facilities and really understand the X's and O's of this game, you know, like a football coach does, um, get some advice, get some advice, you know, as much as, you know, a guy like Jerry Jones from the Cowboys knows about football because he played football at college. Right. He, he, you know, and he owns the Cowboys. He's got experts on his coaching staff that, uh, that he allows to coach. And, uh, you know, it's, it's an interesting scenario there. Country clubs have got to do the same thing. The board of directors, these are very smart people, wonderful you know, intelligent folks, usually nine of them on a board trying to run this club on a part-time basis, you know, with one board meeting a month kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, boy, that's hard. That is so hard to do. And, uh, but we'll do a whole show on that and we'll go over why that's hard to do and what, what the expectations are and what, what the challenges are and all that kind of stuff. Sure. Yeah. Anything we can do to to arm those board members with, uh, again, you know, doing what's best for their club. And uh, whether that you know, means bringing yeah. on a group like us or not, you know, it, it's just about, you know, helping people out. So yeah, it, it, it is. And, and, you know, it's interesting. Uh, um, you know, I've worked for other management companies and been an executive with, 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 with a real big one. And, Everybody is so concerned about giving up their secret sauce. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, it, and maybe we ought to be more concerned with that. But I don't believe in that, and you don't either. So we're going to try and help people no matter what we have to do to do that. Uh, and, uh, and we'll talk more about the options that they have uh, from an advice standpoint on, on a later podcast. Yeah, yeah. We share that belief in, in – the people being the focal, focal point of any successful business, golf clubs or non-golf clubs. And I just hate to see it. I'm seeing it firsthand at this club right down the street from me, how, you know, when you start treating people like shit, it, it, uh, yeah. it really, really affects business. And um, the experience I had there yesterday playing golf was less than satisfactory. <laughs> and, um, mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know, to witness members pulling up on the driving range where my pyramid was the only pyramid left on the driving range. And the member pulled up and said, really, this is exactly what he called the pro shop sitting next to me and said, really, this is exactly what happened to me yesterday. You guys can't mm -hmm. get some balls out here, please. <laughs> you know, yeah. simple yeah. stuff like yeah. that. that. That stuff matters. That stuff matters. And actually, that's the whole deal. I mean, you know, members have got to look, it's a simple thing. You know, members have stress in their life and in their business and, and maybe even in their personal life. When they're paying a monthly fee that belong to a recreational facility like a country club, they expect it to be perfect. They expect it to be perfect, and they have every right to expect it to be perfect. So our deal as an operator, even though it's our business and we know it's not perfect every day, our deal is to make sure that that member never sees our challenges, ever. Like that. And if we can do that, we'll be successful. Yeah.
Hey, if you like my stuff, guys, be sure to subscribe, share it with your buddies, and shoot me any questions you have. I'll be sure to do my best to tackle it in my next episode. Thanks, guys.